Ripple. All right, so let's start talking about the internet. I love the internet, but there's a couple of problems with it, even though it's fantastic. Number one, any company or entity that's putting out content out there is trying to make, uh, feed you stuff that you care more about, more relevance. The most complex algorithms out there have to do with relevance and giving you stuff you care about. Um, and even though there's all this content out there, we are terrible at feeding you stuff about things going on near you, uh, about what people are thinking near you. Uh, this aspect of location, it's, it's just tough to, to really, really tackle. And even though there are some firms that are trying to really get into this location-based X, Y, or Z, uh, they're terrible at trying to simultaneously connect you with you know, other bubbles of the world or, or what's going on uh, in different parts of the world. Now, there are some services that have successfully gone ahead and, and solved this problem, um, but I got news for you guys. Uh, we're living in an echo chamber. Like, a lot of Facebook and Twitter, it's all preaching to the choir. You're following or, or liking things that are posted by your friends. You're retweeting things that Mark Anderson, or, uh, Anderson Horowitz is, uh, is uh, retweeting, and they're very likely to think the same things that you more or less think. And we're terrible as the, inter like, as, as the internet in, uh, in the aggregate of telling you how far your content has actually gone. Where is it reached? Who cares about it? Yeah, some people, you know, if you're Kim Kardashian, can get something retweeted 100,000 times, but I can't, I, I can't do that. Um, so we're terrible at that. So it's in this frame of reference I've been thinking and started working on Ripple. Ripple was launched uh, in January, on January 2nd, so almost a month to this day. Uh, what is it? It's essentially a location-based service that curates content based on what people near you are spreading, but allows for no bounds to how far it can go. Okay, so what does that mean in English? Well, why don't we walk through an example. Let's say I want to share something, uh, and I go ahead and I share it. Uh, let, let's, let's stay local. Who, who's been, actually, I'm not going to use this anymore. Is that okay? Are we recording it? All right. Uh, Whoa, I went backwards. That's not good. All right, here we go. Let's, who's been to Mort Coffee in Seattle, near Pike Place? Who's, has anyone ever been there? They have awesome latte out, so shout out to Mort Coffee. But anyway, let's say I want to talk about Mort Coffee. So I go ahead and I type up a message. Um, that message in Ripple actually travels to 15 people who are physically nearest me with the Ripple app. So if I write it up, you get it, and you get it, and you get it, and you get it. You can engage with the person who's posted it. You can write comments. Um, but the end action, the end result in Ripple is this. You get to see things in a feed, like so on the left. And you essentially have to decide, is this something that's engaging, relevant, or interesting enough for the next person nearest me to see? If so, you, you literally just spread it to 15 people nearest you. Now, if another 15 people get it, and one of them decides that it's interesting, relevant, or engaging for them, for someone else to see, they can go ahead and spread it as well. And what this results to is you can actually see a map of where people are when they spread something. So each blue dot is an actual person that decided that this content was worthy of spreading. Um, and then you can engage in a, in a conversation or in a comment area uh, about what's going on. So in this example, people are talking about what the best coffee in Cap Hill is. Um, and each one of those dots is something that is someone that decided that it was relevant, interesting, or engaging enough for them to comment on and spread to another person. So what does this manifest into? Well, you can imagine that people keep spreading content uh, until it either goes viral, like so on the right, and it's been spread 14,000 times and has gone all the way across uh, the United States and has gone international, or you can uh, envision where someone spreads something and it only really matters to a certain number of people in a particular area. Um, only some number of people care about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause and think, why the heck am I even up here? What does this even matter? Like, who cares about sharing anymore? God, we've solved, trying to solve this problem like hundreds of thousands of times over and over. Well, the first thing is this. Again, there's no good way for people to actually measure what their reach is, what their effect is. Unless, again, you're Kim Kardashian, you're not going to get something retweeted 100,000 times. People who want something spread, content creators, want to know where their content actually went. If you started in Seattle, how long did it take for it to reach New York? If it got to New York, how did it get there? What did people, you know, why did no one in, like, the Bible Belt spread what I wanted to say? What did I say about it? What are the different comments that people are saying about it? What countries did it go to? How far did it go? Did it go to Brisbane? Uh, and, and if so, why? And if not, why not? 
Um, and then, uh, again, sometimes you just aren't, may not be good at what content you post, and it doesn't really go far, and that's fine. Here's another thing. With Ripple, there's no bias into who gets what. So it like, literally spreads to people who are nearest you. Uh, so this echo chamber problem doesn't really exist once something is controversial enough to leave a location. The only bias that is present is location bias, which is broken when you want to have a conversation about what you think about uh, Obama and the budget proposal he sent uh, out yesterday to Congress. Uh, so that's a topic that has been popular uh, as of yesterday on, on Ripple. There's no bias anymore because it, that, that piece of content has actually traveled. It was started in Seattle and has traveled to London already. And people are commenting on that. Um, but here's the main thing. Every piece of content boop, you boop, 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 boop. Every piece of content you get is relevant. It either is spread by people near you or it's been passed on 30, 40, 50, 108 times. It's been spread 108 times and so much more likely to be relevant. So you care about it, thus solving this problem of relevance. We're Ripple. We just started about a month ago. Uh, we have a user base of 700 people. We're looking to grow. If you have an iOS phone, please go ahead and download it. Just search for Ripple. Uh, we are, I think, currently fifth on the list of Ripple. We started at 22nd, so we're going. We're going up there. Uh, and I'd love to take your questions. Gentlemen in the front. It's the exact same thing. Um, there is a competitor out there actually called Plague. Who's heard of Plague? Fantastic. I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's a very, very similar concept. Um, the main thing, the difference is really one thing. Content travels so far as that it is interesting, relevant, and engaging. There was a picture on here about a poster in Capitol Hill that was only spread 14 times, even though I think it should have been spread 108 times. The reason why it didn't spread is because people outside of Seattle didn't know what Capitol Hill was and didn't know what this meant or what it stood for. But it was really, really popular in Seattle. Viruses don't don't have that bias. That's really the only difference. And that's why I love this, because it was this content was only highly relevant to people in Seattle. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm very glad you uh, didn't join on January 3rd because we had that problem. Uh, it's a great problem. I am so excited when we got it because uh, that just means I need to tone it down. Um, and it's been a question as to what is the right notification. Notifi uh, push notifications are a huge topic in the space because they can be a huge like help, but they are also many people remove apps because of that. Um, so one thing, for example, that we need to start doing. Um, is actually sending you less notifications when you have new ripples. Right now, we send you one every time you get 15. Um, and we need to send you a notification every time there's a comment on a thread that you've participated in. All super doable and all a matter of time and, um, and resources. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, that's a fantastic question, and that is problem number two. Um, it's there's so it's a it, again it's a great problem I have, but we need to figure out there's so many uses here. One of them is um, this is perfect for someone who is an active tweeter because they get to see where their stuff has gone, and Twitter has had a huge huge problem on that. Um, but we don't necessarily know uh, if the user is you know a teenager, uh, someone in college, uh, which is what we thought it would be. But our, our, the majority of our users now are people right out of college um, uh, and like in their early 30s. So again, we're a month old and we're trying to figure it out. Um, and the only way to do that really is to, to put it out there, see what people are using it for, tweak a couple things here and there, and see what, what people actually think about it. Um, so if you want to go ahead and try it, and then I will reach out to you in about two or three days. I, we reach out to everyone who downloads the app for feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Why don't you choose it? I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, when are you building it? 
When are you building it? <laughs> yeah, uh, we'd love to have people help us. Uh, we're right now a team of 1.25 full-time members and a ton of people helping on the side. Uh, we love it. It's janky. It's awesome. It's scary. It's uh, riveting. And uh, if you're interested, we'd love to talk. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you so much.